Following his meetings in Jerusalem, David Cameron has confirmed that Israel has decided to act, has made a decision to act, and he said he hoped this would be carried out in a way that minimalized escalation. Uh, he'd met the Israeli president, Isaac Herzog, in Jerusalem, and he... Uh, it, uh, the, the, the internet and... Uh, and the media is saying that Dave Cameron is probably the first non-Israeli politician to recognize that Israeli military action that a reprisal is inevitable. It's right to have our uh, it's right to have made our views clear about what should happen next, but it's clear the Israelis are making a decision to act. We hope they do so in a way that does as little to escalate this as possible. And you know, this is the time, really, when one regrets that we've imposed sanctions on Russia because the next meeting that David Cameron should be having is with the foreign secretary, the foreign minister in Russia, Lavrov. I think the last time he spoke to a British foreign secretary was when he spoke to Liz Truss, uh, who um, has just been publishing a sort of memoir, Ten Years to Save the World, I think, it's probably a little bit late. And if we were to follow Liz Truss's directions, we'd be all over the place. This is a book. I've just got my copy, which contradicts itself on almost every page. It's it's not at all as exciting as, uh, as um, Nadine Doris's book. Liz Truss doesn't really know how to write, but she does know how to throw up a barrage of confusion and this is what she does. It is nonsense from almost page one to page 100. I haven't got much beyond that. And she is indiscreet. She is incoherent. She is absurd. And she blames everybody else except for herself. And it's very difficult, given the fact that she is ubiquitous. You, know, you only have to switch on the telly or open a newspaper to find her her sort of grinning face looking back out at you without catching your eye, because she doesn't do eye contact, um, and, and waving her hands around in some mad marionette-like way. This is, a, this is a former prime minister who should be... Should, should mind what she says, because whenever she opens her mouth... Whenever she speaks, she makes the problem worse. And a good advisor should tell her that she should speak more rarely, because at the moment she is in danger of simply running dry and running on fumes, and nobody will take her seriously at all. I think there's a room, there's room for a faded Prime Minister. Uh, Callaghan became quite an impressive elder statesman. Carter became quite an impressive elder statesman. Liz Truss could do the same sort of thing, but not if she continues to gabble like some mad marionette. Uh, what she needs to do... Oh, oh, and the other thing which I find so interesting at the moment is, in all her recent television appearances, she seemed to strap her hands down so she doesn't do all the hand job stuff that she was so um, in love with during her time in Parliament and, 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 and for quite a long time afterwards. Somebody has clearly given her advice that the only thing to do with her hands is to sit on them. And I must say, I'm very grateful. I was getting so tired of her efforts to regulate her hands and whatever practice, whatever exercises she's been doing to make her hands more expressive the latest advice is the best advice she's ever been given, which is to sit on them and make sure they're not seen. Well done. Whoever gave her that advice has done the world and Liz Truss a major favour.